Welcome back to another episode of Exploring Whiskeys. I'm Eric. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to be doing a, a kind of really interesting yeah. whiskey. This is Old Overholt, bottled in bond, rye. Interesting history on this one. There, such a long, a lot, a lot of. long history and very crazy. But, and a bottle and bond rye, not something, one, that I'm very familiar with. I don't think we've had one on the show. And two, well. Bottle and bond rye? Oh, Colonel Taylor. Taylor. Taylor is a bottle and bond rye, which was amazing. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's on its own level. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, this, this has got a huge and just very in-depth history. It's a PA. Started. 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 It's got its, the throwback for this particular bottle of whiskey is PA. The family moved over in like 1800s is when they moved over to, from like the Allegheny area, went west and settled down in basically- west, like Western Pennsylvania. Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh-y type area. So went from Philly to Pittsburgh, kind of <laughs> like, which is now like a, a, what, four, three, four <laughs> hour drive, but it took them six months to get there. They went over there about 1803. There's they, a lot to visit back then, you know, the sightseeing. Sure, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that one. But I'm, I'm sure. just speculating, six months to Six go. months, that's, there's a lot of, maybe there was a lot of whiskeys distilleries to, to visit on yeah. that tour. <laughs> In the 18, around 1803, uh, they started their own farm, had like 263 acres in that region, uh, and decided, hey, it, very common back in that day is, you know, you make grain, and if you have enough to feed your livestock, you have enough family. to feed your family, then you need to do something with it. Can you let it go to waste? A good way to store it is to ferment it, which turns into whiskey mm -hmm. <laughs> or some other beverage. And, and this is a nod to a very specific region and process for rye. Mm -hmm. And and I'm going to let Eric say the name of the river because the he's got it Gila. So that's the region <laughs> that this rye is a nod to, uh, Mangala Gila. Well, there's three rivers that form the Ohio, yep. the Allegheny, the Mangala Gila. And kind of the start of the Ohio River goes down. Okay. So Midwest uh, kid. Yeah. Grow you, up. you got that. You got that. I got it. Abraham, who it's Abraham Overholt, is the picture on the front of the bottle mm -hmm. uh, with his little, He's a, he doesn't seem like Scowl. he's a happy dude. No. Um, I believe they were Mennonites. So uh, the his son, Abraham, was the guy who decided he was, he went all in on this. He took over in around 1810. He built out the, they started off making just a little bit of whiskey. And then they got to the point where they were making like 15 yeah. gallons of whiskey a day. And within, by 1832, they were doing 150 gallons of whiskey a day. 55,000 gallons a year in 1832. Pretty impressive. He continued to build it all out. They... It changed hands, kind of stayed in the family, but somewhat changed hands. The, the Abraham's grandson was running it with a friend of his with the last name of Mellon. Carnegie Mellon, Pittsburgh. Ooh, I wonder if that is the same Mellon. I bet it is. It probably is because when Abraham's grandson passed away, the, the control of the company moved over to Mellon. Um, and that was right around the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the Prohibition Act comes in place. <laughs> and who does Harding pick as the Secretary of State? <laughs> no, Secretary of Treasury. It was actually the guy who Started. was the, the major owner at the time, that Mellon. And during Prohibition, he was the one that was able to uh, give out the medicinal licenses. So guess which whiskey got a medicinal license? This yeah. fine bottle. Exactly. Overholt. Overholt. So at that point, he ended up having to sell that because there's conflict of interest probably. So Just he, a tad. 
He ended up selling that to another local distillery. Uh, that distillery produced Old Overholt through the 1950s. And then... Gray area. No one knows. It's just a significant gap in yeah. the records of... Yeah, of their history. It continued. It. The label related to Old Overholt continued through the whole time up until Jim Beam bought it in 87. But nobody knows who distilled it. I'm going to give you my speculation. Yep. Looking at the bottle, the color of the label, the color of the bottle, the shape of the bottle, this looks just like Seagram 7. It, the, the, the label is the same color. The shape, the bottle is brown. It's just the cap is a different color. Maybe. And Seagram's is, they dabble they in do their, that northern rye, rye type thing. So yeah. I would not be surprised if Maybe. Seagram's. But that's the, that's kind of the weird kick to this. So they they did a, they had a bottled and bond whiskey for years, up through apparently about 1960 range. And then it, that stopped. But the Overholt name existed throughout that whole time. Bean bought it in 87-ish, moved everything from PA to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. At some point during those gray years, gray years, sure, <laughs> um, they did change. They believe the mash bill was changed. Uh, it wasn't like all rye. It probably got a little bit of corn added in. Prohibition really changed the popularity of rye. Uh, so they, you know, a little bit more of a bourbon note. Uh, but back in the day, Overholt was, like, beloved across the nation. Ulysses S. Grant? Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday. You, you Big gotta fan. Love, Big fans. You gotta love a whiskey that was loved by Doc Holliday. Now, my only reference to Doc Holliday is movies. Going back to the bottle and bond, we know it's at least four years old. 100 proof. We know it's bottled at 100 proof. We know it was a single, Ooh, single distillery, single, just single, single, single season, season. Federally bonded warehouse. I mean, glass bottle. Glass bottle. Don't know a whole heck of a lot after that. That's a Seagram 7 bottle. <laughs> but you got grumpy old Abraham sitting right on the front. It's interesting, though, that Bean bought it because Bean, they didn't have a rye. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's got to be the primary reason they wanted to expand outside of their it's an, pretty it's traditional a, bourbon. It already had name recognition. Yeah. Revive. Can't it, revive yeah, it existed. It. Yeah. You pick up the ethanol. Yeah. Because of the, the proof. It's 100 proof. You're going to get that. It's got the rye spice to it. Yeah, but it's not like. It's not overpowering. It's not aggressively it's, rye. It's there. Yes. Nice dark color to it. For saying it's. I, I, I want to say this is pretty close to four years old. Oof, that's good. There's no rye bite. It's, yeah, that pepper is not, yeah. It's not peppery. There's herbally notes. Right? It's a caramel. It's a toffee. There's a sweet, there's a really strong sweet note around that. But you don't even get the 100 proof. Oh, on the, no, no, you're right. On the palate, it's not. No, it's, it's, um, it drinks like a much lower proof. It's, but it's. It's very, go back and nose it. It's still very apparent on the nose. I get why this one made the list. Oh, we actually forgot to mention that. <laughs> this was number 13. 12. 12. Okay. Number 12 on the 2020 uh, whiskey advocate list of the top 20 whiskeys for 2020. This was released in 2020. But for a rye that for drinks rye. like this. Yeah. And for the price point. Oh, forgot to mention the price point. Feel We're talking like 25, 26. You bucks. don't take a gamble on this one for 25 bucks. You're missing, totally you're missing out. Could you imagine this as a mix? Like an old fashioned mm. with this? It'd be solid. And at 25, 26 dollars, totally worth it. You're not going to miss out on that. Doesn't need to be mixed. Mm -mm. Super smooth. Super sweet, not overly bitey, and 100 proof. The second sip, I got more of the the rye spice, but it's still relatively smooth. But it still does not drink like 100 proof. 
It still drinks in that low. It doesn't the drink low 100 90s. proof. The spice comes through, but it's not proof nope. burn. Mm -mm. It's just spice burn. Spice notes. Mm -hmm. There is that rye, peppery, but it's not aggressive. Like, no. <laughs> we've had 1792s with more aggressive rye notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, there's, but there's a little oak and there's a little pepper in there. Not aggressive. No. There's a lot of sweet notes, toasted grain notes, that kind of thing. It's a very simplistic, like the whole bottle is, everything about it is super simple. You, know, you got a plastic twist off cap. Everything about it is super simple. Really solid whiskey. That is a very solid whiskey. I would agree. You find it here locally? Or you travels? Uh, I got that in Jersey. <laughs> I got that. I, say, I, I have seen it. I, I have not I've seen, seen it. it. I've not seen it here in, in the Nashville area. Ah, damn. Why do I think I? I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Now I'm gonna have to. But I know we can talk to. Yeah. Go down to our buddy yeah. Laverne and see what he can get. Yeah. Got to convince Mitt to pull that. Well, it's I beam. think that would sell. It's beam. Yeah, it's an hour. Distribution's and, not an issue. It's an hour and a half yeah. north. I just don't know how much they make. Now, I wonder if they have a non-bottled and bond version. I don't know the answer to that. Didn't look that up. If you don't chew it or swish it or aerate it or any of that kind of stuff, you barely get any rye notes. It's really, really a sweet whiskey. It's a caramel. It's uh, it's corn, very caramely. Buttery, yes. butterscotch. Like those yes. kind of kind of it kind of leans to that flavor, like yep. part of the palate wheel. It's holding it in your mouth a little bit and, and kind of moving it around. That's when some of the rye notes start to come out. But they're still not aggressive. Nope. Not at all. It's a hidden gem. This is a hidden gem. I poured a whiskey for my father-in-law that I may we may or may not review at this point. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I'm not sure I, we're going to be allowed. Still need to figure that out. <laughs> and then I poured that. I was like, all right, we've had their whiskey let's try this one and and yeah there's no comparison this is so much it's a smoother drink there there's everything about it is just well rounded it's well put together it's a really really good whiskey and it's a rye and for kevin to gloat on a rye i'm gonna put this up there with the eh taylor rye it's really close and it's a Hell of a lot cheaper and a lot oh. easier to find. Yeah, way easier to find. Well, not here, but in other areas. Uh, it's up there. It is up there with the E.H. Taylor it, rye. I feel like the E.H. Taylor rye, it's been a while since we sampled yeah, that, that one. that was super candy. That was just on a, it's kind of <laughs> on another level for rye. Like this is. But it's close. Clo it's one step below. And twenty five dollars, right? <laughs> Not like ninety. That's kind of where I'm going here. Yep. If you want to experiment into rise and you're not, you don't like the. I'm gonna say that it's more the spice note of most rise that I don't enjoy. That pepper note and things like that. When it gets to the black tea, which I don't get a lot of black tea in mm -mm. this, but it, I don't mind black tea or unsweet tea, th things like that. But the when you get to the more spicy. The licorice -y type rise, I don't, that's where I'm not a huge fan. That's not in this. This mm -hmm. is really sweet, a little bit of spice. The longer you keep it in your mouth, the more, it spices the, the more spice you get. But if it's a, if it's a quick drink, it don't, I don't think it drinks like a rye. It drinks like a high rye bourbon is what it drinks like. But I know it's at least 51% rye because it's labeled as a rye. Mm -hmm. So it's not... A high rye bourbon, it is a rye, and it's really solid. Yeah, especially for the price. And a crazy history. I, I love the, the oh fact that there's God. so much history. The last big distillery before Prohibition. Melon. What, melon. Yeah, whatever that melon dude, whatever his name was, Andrew Melon. So if he, I don't know if he's related to Carnegie Mellon. That's really an interesting idea. I didn't think of the relationship there, but it's well, a good the possibility. That's the college in yeah, and then Mellon Bank. Yeah, 
So, so I, I imagine they're tied. If Al- oh my, yeah, that was when I was doing the. Andrew Mellon was a banker, and friends with Overholt's grandchild or something. They're all those tied. Lines. Totally tied together. <laughs> anyway, the last building when he they expanded, expanded, and expanded, and then the very last building before he became the Secretary of Treasury and had to sell off everything. Uh, that building still exists and is a historical museum in that region. Should be. For, it's it's like one of the only like pre-Civil War buildings, industrial towns and buildings that still exist in that area. And it's a huge it is a place to stop for the American whiskey trail, maybe not Kentucky. But also think about like one started there, and then you completely uprooted it. Yeah. How many of those are out there that were completely uprooted? Uprooted, and don't I don't know. Probably I, not many. Can, I was gonna say PA had a lot of that whole area of Pennsylvania. <laughs> I, I've done the drive a, a lot of times with a buddy of mine through middle of Pennsylvania. There's a lot of fields. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of grain that's being grown in the middle of Pennsylvania. When that's you, a state that's kind of the the mixture of the Midwest and the East Coast. Yeah, well, like it's the corn, the rye. It's, it's, it's Philly and it's Pittsburgh, and then it's farms everywhere in the middle, <laughs> and a lot of you, you got the Mennonites, you've got the uh, all the, the different Amish. Uh, the Amish region near. Uh, Hershey area, like all that kind of stuff. Lancaster area, yep. So I could see there probably used to be a lot of distilleries in that region. I just, like, they just didn't, they didn't make it through Prohibition is really what it comes down to. It's what it feels like. It feels like a lot of those distilleries. If you got a lot of small distilleries in the same region, it's kind of like anything else. Like you got to consolidate. Someone's not going to make it. Someone's yeah. going to buy the other person out. Yep. And, you know, they're before Prohibition, right before Prohibition, I'm sure there's only a couple standing. But they probably merged. Yeah. But, again, the idea of one that it had a lot of popularity. Yep. Made it through. Yeah. Thank for some. Got the medicinal. Favorable. Uh, <laughs> it's always good when you know the secretary. But then, like, the whole <laughs> idea of completely being uprooted because there's acquisitions made now. Yeah. But they don't move that. Yeah. It's you still just operate there. Like, this was completely uprooted. Yeah. And it even says it on the label born in PA, made in Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, they're throwing a nod there. The fact that they've uprooted that and moved, just moved it. And it, again, a nod to Beam, though. Beam was just straight Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. And it was just one, that standard white yeah. white label. Yeah. And then, like, you know what? We're, we're going to roll the dice on this one. And they did a good job because this is a... Yeah, they did a really good job. Solid, solid bottle. And they took a gamble on a, on a rye. Ooh, that's the other thing, though. So the flavor profile, if you're putting it in a warehouse... It's Pennsylvania summers and winters. You uproot all this mm, to Kentucky. It's yeah, it's a different. There's going to be a change. The summers are definitely going to be hotter. The winters are going to be not as well mild, milder, not milder. Yeah, not maybe not as long. I, I just got you got to think about like a Pittsburgh winter is probably pretty bitter at times. Mm-hmm. It, it very interesting, interesting story. Yeah. Ooh, and where this is distilled, they they don't release Beam doesn't, but they think it's either Clearmont or Boston. And I know Boston. It all goes back to that Boston batch mm-hmm. of of Booker. So um, that's one of the yeah. It's one of those that they don't release which distillery it's distilled in or aged in. Well, I'm glad they kept it alive. I, I agree. I was nervous to buy it because <laughs> it's a rye, but I wanted to give it a shot, and I'm really, really glad I did. Yep. And I really recommend to anyone who's at least somewhat interested in expanding their palate outside of bourbons bourbons or whatever whiskey you're 
you want this is a ride a try that's it's probably a, it's accessible. The, it's the tiptoe. It is a tiptoe. I got a couple rides down here we're going to get into <laughs> that are they're not tiptoes. They're holy freaking ride. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brave for this guy, but I got to try. Got to try. Got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere and I I think this is a really good start. It's a it's a great bottle. It's got a great history to it. Great history to it. It's an unbelievable bottle, especially for the price. It's great 25 flavor bucks. profile, great price. I would have thought this would probably have been more of the thirty-five, forty-dollar bottle yeah. for the for the way it tastes, and it doesn't even really truly taste like a rye. It has mm -hmm. those notes, but yep. it drinks more more like a bourbon. Yeah, I think the sweetness definitely deserved the the number twelve ranking that it got last year yeah which just makes me so interested to try keep going up the list because <laughs> i my personal opinion is i'd rank that higher well we'll see again glad you scored it absolutely me too so it's a good little catch well we appreciate you joining this episode of the old overhaul it's a solid ride especially for the price we hope you enjoyed the review if you did we encourage you to hit that like button at the bottom of the screen when you're down there if you're new to the channel subscribe hit the bell icon so you get notified every time that we put out a new episode leave us a comment have you ever had this or i'm gonna go is there any other rides that you really really are think are amazing that we need to try let us know all right Thanks for joining. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.